Welcome to our video lecture, Introduction and Benefits to EMI Courses. I'm Dr. Dawn Bukowski from Ohio University. In this video, I will introduce and give an overview of EMI, or English as the Medium of Instruction. I'll compare EMI to other models for instruction, such as ESP or CLIL, and we'll look at the main goals and benefits for EMI programs. Please take notes on areas that you think you'll need more information on so that you can use that information for the course plans. So what is EMI? According to Dearden in 2015, EMI is the use of the English language to teach academic subjects in countries or jurisdictions where the first language of the majority of the population is not English. This means that a group of people don't speak English as their first language, but they're using English when they learn. It's a rapidly expanding global trend that requires new ways of teaching and learning. That's why we're here together. You have probably heard of other ways that English is taught in relation to content. So let's briefly compare those different ways to EMI. For example, Maybe you've heard of CLIL, or Content and Language Integrated Learning. How is this different from EMI? Well, CLIL doesn't just focus on content. The second language students are learning is an equal goal of instruction. In other words, both language and content are goals of a CLIL course. And in fact, the language of instruction can be something besides English. It could be Spanish, for example. And CLIL is a term generally used for primary and secondary education levels. It's usually for pre-university education. With EMI, however, the content is the focus, and it's at the university level. Another term you may have heard of is ESP, or English for Specific Purposes. With ESP, the purpose of the classes is to help students improve their level of English these are language courses rather than content courses. Therefore, the student's English proficiency in an ESP course should be lower than the English level of students in EMI programs. ESP courses focus on the English that students need in their field. In sum, EMI courses prioritize learning the content and require higher English language proficiency than either CLIL or ESP courses. So let's take a look at about why we have EMI. You've probably heard of some of these goals and benefits already. And of course, the purpose of using English for instruction depends on the context and the country where it is being implemented. In countries that have widespread English outside the classroom, Goals and practices will be different from contexts where there is less English in the community. But in general, we can consider five main goals or benefits for EMI courses. The first is to raise the English proficiency level of the country and provide a well-qualified bilingual workforce. Much of the content in many fields these days is written in English. Knowing English helps workers stay up to date and professors think that EMI improves understanding of science, in particular, written in English, and that it builds the communication potential for their students to share research or projects internationally. The second builds on the first, to promote international exchange or to internationalize a campus, which is important not only at an individual level, but for countries as well. With EMI, universities can attract international students, and having a diverse student body can offer many benefits to the instructor and to all the students. And third is to raise the quality and prestige of educational programs, and often generate revenue through charging higher tuition. 